from a project that we started that we had never cultivated golden kelp here on site to now seeing it transition really healthy in the lab out into the bay as well. So for me it's really rewarding to be part of this project because you feel you're making a difference overall to bringing the kelp back into the bay. So we're currently at the Queenscliff Marine Science Centre in Queenscliff and this is Deakin University's Marine Research Centre where we do quite a host of different uh, trials and research all related to the Great Southern Reef. Yeah, so we're using two ways to grow the kelp here on site. One is called the twine method, which is the wrapping of the cotton twine along the PVC piping. The other method we are also using is using gravel or green gravel or rocks ultimately to seed the kelp onto those rocks and then they're out planted. We're also trialling a blend of those two methods. When we obtain our golden kelp uh, stock from the sites that we've collected it from, we bring it back to the lab here and we release the reproductive tissue to obtain what we call the, the spores. Those spores are then cultured in what we call a red room and that red room can culture them up to the second stage of the reproductive life cycle which are the gametophytes and we can keep those gametophytes in a holding pattern so to speak in that red light where they can be hibernating until we need to take them out and use them for seeding for longer in, in the project. So the red room is a way to seed bank or keep the kelp longer term and we can utilise different populations that we've collected from the bay when we need them so we can actively be storing those sites now for the longer term for bigger restoration projects that we take on into the future. Part of this project is not just about growing kelp and planting it out in the ocean, but we're actually working with our project partners to also do some urchin management and they are going into the bay where they're culling the urchins to a reduced density that can then coexist with the kelp that we're then out planting. As part of that project we're also monitoring those locations before and after the culling and then also before and after the out planting of the kelp so we can get a bit of a longer term picture of our impact of the active restoration that we're doing in Port Phillip Bay. So the ongoing challenge that we have for restoration is the funding that is required to continue this work further down the track. Our project will have an end point and after that end point we need to still be able to not just walk away from it but continue to monitor the urchin populations but also monitoring the kelp and whether there's more active restoration required in those areas but also expanding it beyond the two sites that we're currently restoring as well.